That means this 12,000 euro 3D printing project made me exactly... If you have any aspirations to eventually make money with 3D printing or run a print shop or just print a huge number of 3D prints, this video is going to be interesting for you. This is the final batch of a $12,000 3D printing project. There's only one little piece missing. Here we have it, the last piece of the last batch. The only thing left is to do the threaded inserts. We're gonna talk about the following things in this video. What is this project all about? How did my calculation for this project look like? And which part of the project made me the most money? How much filament did I use and how much was wasted for failed prints? What did I learn and what mistakes did I make? What would I do differently next time? Which 3D printers did I use? What issues did my 3D printers have during the project? And what were the root causes? What happened to the revenue of the project and where did I invest? So let's start at the beginning. These are all pieces for a computer case. So this is the main body and here we have top and bottom elements and a so-called LED fan ring. And in all of these boxes there's additional parts like mainboard holders, hard disk holders and more stuff. And I've been talking about this project in another video in detail, so I'm gonna link that up here in the corner for you, so you can see how the assembly of that computer case works in detail. Just this batch here is 25 complete computer case assemblies. This is how much filament I've been using. This is three boxes, 10 spools of one kilogram each, so 30 kilogram of material for this whole thing and I'm reusing those boxes to deliver the parts. So there's also more parts in here for this computer case. So, so much st stuff to deliver. So much stuff to be delivered today. So I'm gonna deliver this to my client now and we're gonna deep dive on all of the other questions. So the computer case project originally started in 2022 when a company approached me and they had an idea of doing a computer case 3D printed for their current software release. So the idea is that they are going to ship the software together with some hardware to their customers. Back then in 2022 they had someone who started to designing the case and the problem with that case was it wasn't really working. So they approached me and asked me can I have a look at this design and how much would it cost to 3D print that. At that time I didn't have an idea how many of those cases they would need, how big that project is going to be. So I had a look at the design and I told them it has all kinds of issues and it doesn't look that it's really going to be working. I think the, their first idea was that they wanted someone to help them with the design and then they wanted to 3D print the whole project themselves. They had already bought a 3D printer to do the printing but they had no idea how to use it and how to make it work. I think they already started to test this printer but they ran into all kinds of issues and couldn't fix them themselves. So I offered to come over and we had a little chat and we were talking about the project and how many cases they were about to print, so 85. And I told them there's no way that you can do this with one single printer in time and then without any huge problems. And I also told them that their original design that they had in mind has so many flaws and doesn't work so it has to be completely redone from scratch to make the assembly much easier and to make it really maintainable because that was also a large issue that once assembled you couldn't get to the parts anymore that easily. It would take a lot of time to disassemble the thing and there were so many other issues so long story short after the first meeting with the customer we came to the conclusion that I'm gonna make a complete redesign of the whole project and that I'm going to print it for them. And that's where I started making my calculation. Before we come to the calculation part and how much money I made on a project, I just want to make a few points clear how I generally approach the conversation. So I was never offering to do print on demand. I was always going to offer 
a complete project with a complete result and not individual items. Versus if they had gone to a printing service, they would have gotten a price based on an individual printable item. And that would have been a completely different price and a completely different calculation. But I was offering the full package, like full service, like design, prototype, test, 3D prints, deliver, everything in one big package. And that made it much easier for me to calculate more margin into the project and to earn more money. And you will see this in a second. So the last delivery has been done. Honestly, I'm super happy that this project is over. I learned so many new things in this project. It was really, really super interesting. But on the other hand, I'm also super happy that I can now focus on new projects. And this chapter is going to come to an end now. So I'm gonna walk you through my calculation right now. So to do the calculation, I'm using my 3D printing quoting sheet, the one that I've been sharing along other videos also. So the link is down in the description. Please, if you wanna use it, make a copy to your own Google Drive. Don't ask me to give you right access, but use it and copy it to your own Google Docs so you can then edit it from there. So how it works for this case is I have entered the amount of filament here and the type of filament and that determines the price for the filament that has been used. We also have some parameters here that we can set for the printer that we wanna use. And there's a special tab here where you can enter your printer details. So how much does your printer cost? How long will it last the depreciation time? How much are you likely gonna invest in terms of servicing costs in the lifetime of the printer? The energy consumption, so how much power does the printer use in kilowatt hours? And that calculates a certain number per hour that's gonna add it on top of the material usage as a factor of calculating the printing price. So this all goes into the calculation. So we have the weight here. We have the printing time. The total printing time for the whole thing is 34 hours. I got it down from like 64 hours to 34 by using different printers and tuning my print speed setting. So a significant drop in the print time than I had from the original calculation. And this is like an updated version when I was starting to use the Bambola printers. Now then we have several other little things here. Model preparation time slicing, material change, transfer and start, so like transferring data. So that's the real work that I'm investing for all of the parts for one computer case. And seven minutes is, sounds still quite low. And then we have the post-processing section where I'm going to calculate two minutes for job removal. That means removing parts from the print bed, also sometimes cleaning the print bed, throwing away the garbage and all of that stuff. Some additional work that might be involved here to clean up the part. And then we have finally consumables here, which is for example the threaded inserts that I'm using for this printed part. Then what the spreadsheet does is it takes all of this input data, so the printer price per hour and the filament price per gram, and makes the calculation. So we have 17 euros of filament cost, electricity is 388, the depreciation of the printer, the preparation, time, labor, post-processing, and consumables gives us a total of 5568 euros exchangeable with dollars and then we have one more number here which is including failures because i have set a failure rate of 10 percent of my default so it will calculate that 10 percent of all of the prints are going to fail and that is going to be added on top as cost now when we come to the final quote how does this work so far we only talk about cost that means we're not earning any money here that's why i'm doing the markup so markup 50 percent means that is added on top of the cost to calculate the final price. So the suggestion here is a little bit higher than I, what I quoted. So I quoted 89 euros. And then we see we have a margin of 27 euros and 75 cents per complete computer case. So when we look at that in the context of the bigger project, we have a 12,000 euro project here. The production cost for 85 cases 
is 5,200 and a few euros. And then we have a price of 7,565. So the margin is 31%. So we're actually earning 2,300 euro for the production of the cases. Finally, we come to the design and prototyping part, which was actually in the beginning of the project, which I calculated my own cost with 1,500 euro. And I priced it at 4,435, which gives us a margin of 66%. So you see, I calculated a much bigger buffer here. I wasn't sure how long it's going to take to finalize the design. And also the prototyping phase was a little bit fuzzy for me, but I wanted to create this complete package and I didn't want to come with a hourly rate or something. I wanted to give the customer the safety that whatever happens and how many revisions we're going to have, how many changes they want and how many prototypes we need to print, that's going to be a fixed price. And so the risk is on my side. And if I'm faster, I earn more money. And that's what happened here. That means this 12,000 euro 3D printing project made me exactly 5,293.67 euro which results in a profit margin of 44.11%. So the takeaway here for me was that the design phase is clearly the phase where I can earn more money and the production phase is really much more of a chore. So it's really, you have to get it done. You have to do it every single day, get your printers running 24 seven. That is a lot of work and it can be very exhausting. I mean, the learning curve that I had was steep. I had so many things gonna fail on me, but if I had to choose which of the two things I would do. I would rather focus on designing and the prototyping phase and have the actual production done by a third party, maybe a production service or another person that just focuses on the 3D printing part. I also have an interesting conclusion here about how much filament I was actually using and how many failed prints I had. Throughout the project I had the feeling somewhat that my 10% failure rate could be accurate but I was always having the feeling I'm actually wasting more material. I had so many things that I was throwing away that in the end I'm really really interested to see the final numbers. So here we see I have compiled all the filament usage for the whole part, so for the whole computer case one case now takes exactly one kilogram of material to print. I think in the initial calculation it was around about 700, 750 gram of filament. And why that is different now is I'm using thicker bottom and top layers and I'm also using more external parameters. That makes each part heavier. I had to experiment a little bit of the infill settings and so some of the parts needed to be more rigid. Now I look back in my receipts for all the filament that I have been ordering for this project and in total I have purchased 104.6 kilogram of material. Some spools were 800 gram spools and some of them were one kilogram spools. Now the calculated usage if we are producing 85 cases is 85 kilograms of course. And in the end I had 14 kilogram of filament left over which was a little bit too much, um, but nothing serious. I think I can use it for a different project now. And with those numbers, I can calculate how much filament was actually wasted. It was 5.6 kilogram for the whole project. Honestly, that surprises me a little bit. I, th I had always the feeling that I was throwing away more material, but maybe just from the weight perspective, because of the volume of the parts, it always looked a little more. But if I think about it, when I was throwing away, for example, a tube, which is the center part of the computer, the case it's rather big but it's probably not that heavy so that gives us a failure rate of 6.18 percent and with my calculation of 10 percent failure rates i'm pretty safe here so we didn't waste as much filament as assumed which is a good sign better for the environment and that's also good because that means my printers are more reliable than i was actually calculating in the beginning of the project so let me talk about what mistakes did i make and what would i do different next time so i started with a smaller fleet in the end I had like eight printers running, but in the beginning, I think I had four or five printers running in the print farm, which in the end turned out that this wasn't enough to deliver the project in time in the end. In the beginning, it was, of course, a little more relaxed because we did the prototyping phase and that meant I wasn't doing batch production. I wasn't doing mass production. I was just printing from time to time to test out a new design prototype. And it was also not so stressful for the printers. When the real production started, I learned that having so many different 3D printers isn't really helping. So that's very under 
stated, if you have a print farm that where every single 3D printer is a different brand, is a different model, and on top, because I'm, I love to tinker with my 3D printers, is slightly modified or even heavily modified as some of them are, it doesn't make this job easier. Because all of these printers, if something fails, it's always a different thing. If you have more printers of the same type and brand, it is easier to keep spare parts in stock. And if you have to repair something, you are more getting used to what, what you have to do. If you have different printers, like in the end, I added the Bamboo Labs into the fleet and there was some issues. So I had to learn from scratch how to fix it for this specific printer. And then another model was added and I had to learn to fix the problems for that specific printer. Now, another learning was uh, printing faster sounds easier than it actually is. I mean, I get it, everyone wants to print faster and faster and printers are getting faster, don't get me wrong. The Bamboo Labs are faster and the uh, Kitty X Plus 3 that I added as a last printer to the feed is also quite fast. Just because your printer can print faster, it doesn't mean that it's good for the part that you're printing. There are situations when the material isn't suited for printing so fast. I had to learn it the hard way. I was buying filament from a specific brand and in the past it was all good, it worked fine. And then for some reason, I think the quality of the material just got, went down a little bit and I had more and more issues and I was wondering, is it my printers? Am I doing something wrong here? And I figured that it's actually the material that was causing the problems. So I had so many more nozzle clocks and other issues with the extruders that I went and bought different other materials to test out whether this is the problem and I figured yes it is the filament and I had to use a different brand. That adds into the topic of printing faster. You have to have the right filament to print fast and have less failures because let's be honest if you're printing the fastest possible on your printer all the time you're gonna have more failed prints. Well if you have one thing that fails doesn't really matter you're gonna do it the next time you're gonna do it another time and then you probably print a little slower and then you're good but if you have to figure out that every single time or you're risking to print so fast that you're like likely having more failures that is gonna add up to the costs in the end and so I decided that a lot of the parts are actually print quite slow uh, another thing that I wasn't really anticipating is if you have eight printers running like in the end that was eight printers in the room running it gets super 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 hot and the air in that room is almost unbreathable like you you don't want to be there when all of the printers are running always the windows open and then all the mosquitoes come in <laughs> so it's not fun so that's that's really one key takeaway if you want to run multiple printers in a room you have to have proper ventilation in place but what are the mistakes that I made in this project one of the main things that I should have done differently was I should have insisted on delivering the whole project when the customer ordered it Instead, what we agreed on is something like, like a on-demand batch production. So I produced 10 cases when they had all the computer parts coming in because in 2022, it was super hard to get the components for the computers. They weren't just available. So main boards were hard to get, CPUs, memory, anything that you can imagine was really hard to purchase. So I agreed that I would produce only when they have enough parts. And I think that was from, from my point of view, for me, that was a huge mistake because I could just have continued printing all of the parts, which I didn't. And, and that would have made my life much easier because then I would just have sent them all the parts over and get my money. Mistake number two goes hand in hand with the first part is I should have focused on getting more of the same printers at the beginning of the project. Instead, I bought a few other printers. So the Sovol printers and a Bamboo Lab P1P. So I added to the problem. Essentially, I wanted to try out these different printers, how they are in the print farm. I should have gone for the Bamboo Labs right from the start, honestly. Another thing that I completely underestimated was the amount of time I had to invest into printer maintenance. And I didn't put that so much into the calculation of this project. So you could say, because I had so many different printers in my farm, that was also taking more time. So maintenance, for example, on an Ender 3 is different than maintenance on a Bamboo Lab. And so maintenance time in general, if you print so many parts and you are stressing your printer so much to the limits, lubrication, frequent lubrication, lubrication alongside with frequent cleaning is 
super important. And another thing that uh, like will get in your mental health in some way is if you have your printers running, uh, for example, if you have eight printers running at the same time and you're leaving the house for several hours, right? This, this, the mental stress <laughs> coming home and hoping that nothing is going to fail, that you're not going to come home and see a huge blob on your printer or a huge spaghetti or the filament is running out, you can most likely throw away the part. So really running printers overnight and several hours if you're not at home, even if you have cameras, it's a mental stress. What I would do differently next time, really like coming back to the printers, I would probably have more printers of the same brand and the same type. I would probably also try to focus on the design and prototyping phase and make that the main thing of the project. And then I would try to figure out if the customer can print the parts themselves or if they can order them from a printing service. Doing the design part and the prototyping is easy with a, just a few printers, right? You don't have to have multiple printers, you don't need a print farm, but if you really want to do batch production that adds on top so much complexity and you need the space, you need the room, you need ventilation and all of stuff that is added complexity. And if, you're, if your customer doesn't need so many prints at the same time, it's probably better if I would go and teach them how to use a 3D printer and charge them for a 3D printing course like a workshop or multiple workshops, I would probably earn me more money and give them the freedom to do whatever they want at any time they want. And personally, my biggest learning, I don't scale very well because I'm just one person. So focusing on the most valuable things in the value chain of the project is totally makes sense for a single person business. Now let's take a brief look at the 3D printers that I've been using in this project. So we're starting over here with the Prusa Mini. So this printer has been sent to me by Prusa several years ago as a test device. It is almost in the original state. The only thing that I changed out is the extruder motor here. So it's the dual gear extruder, the uh, Bontech IFS, which is a much improved extruder for the Prusa Mini. I can highly recommend to do this if you have the Prusa Mini. It makes the printer so much more reliable. With this printer, I actually had the least amount of problems. It's probably the most reliable printer that I have in this print farm, <laughs> which sounds rather funny but it's it's really true and then over here i have my good old ender 3 printers the ender 3v2 and the ender 3 pro main modification on these two printers is probably that i upgraded the hot end system here and the cooling to a hero me setup with another firmware of course so this printer here runs clipper since a while which makes it a little bit faster and it also has a different hot end but the thing with this printer is it's highly experimental and it took me a while to figure out what are the best print settings for this printer to deliver consistent low failure results and that's that's really difficult. Same is true for the Ender 3 Pro but the Ender 3 Pro is still running Marlin firmware so it's a little slower. It delivers the results so that's not the problem with this printer. So don't get me wrong, printing slower is not the problem. Some of the failed prints were because of nozzle clocks which were easy to repair and for this printer I had to exchange the extruder gears basically they were broken so that was probably something that was just over time wearing out and so I had to replace it and then of course the typical thing to do here with these kind of printers is you have to replace the rubber wheels at some point because if you're running these printers several hundred hours thousands of hours these rubber wheels are going to wear down. Now we're coming to the Sovol SV06 Plus and the SV06 over there. I got these printers and added them to my print farm with the goal to have two more reliable printers for the print farm and to be able to print a little faster than on the Ender printers. However, I figured quite soon that both printers have the same issue when they come with stock blower fans here for the hot end cooling. These fans are too small, so this is the original fan that comes with the printer. These fans are supposed to cool down the upper end of the hot end throat and so it keeps the filament from getting stuck. But because the fans are too small, they're not powerful enough, the filament gets stuck quite easily, so it's gonna clog. And that's why I replaced this with a bigger 5050 fan on both printers and that made these two printers so much more reliable. I would say this is the most important upgrade you have to do to a Sovol SV06 or SV06 Plus. Replace this fan. The SV06 Plus is mostly stock configuration except one little thing that I had to replace 
the filament sensor broke and I had to print my own and replace it. And that one is much more reliable. I made a little video about that also on my channel, but it's still running the same firmware and it's just working. It's just reliable. And the SVO6 over here, I installed Clipper. I wanted to try out Clipper at some point. I wanted to run the printer faster. That is working quite well, actually. It took me probably a few days to figure out how Clipper works and how to get it working with this printer. And it's printing much faster than with the stock Balin firmware. Now we're coming over to the bamboo corner. This is the X1 Carbon. I've got it over a year back when it was still a pre-production device and I had to swap out a few of the parts now a half a year later because some of the parts you can't actually get anymore and they have replaced it with newer versions for the actual production. And now with the new parts this printer is basically a new printer. It works and works and works and has been printing thousands of hours and I just had a few nozzle clocks. But besides the nozzle clocks that are super easy to fix, this printer just works. You don't have to think about it. I added later this P1P and I discovered that it's just very similar in terms of the reliability. It doesn't have the housing. It is basically the same printer with a little reduced setup. It doesn't have like the, the glass panels and all that stuff, but still it's a super reliable printer. I'm super happy with this printer. I purchased it on my own terms and I used it throughout the whole project. I would definitely recommend if you want to start, you don't have that money for the X1 Carbon, this is probably the best choice or the P1S, which has the enclosure. But honestly, if you're just printing PLA, it's not needed. And then finally, uh, last thing in this fleet, which has just been added, is the Kitty X Plus 3. It did not contribute to the project so much. I printed just a few parts to speed up the printing, but in the end, this is going to be my new printer for high temperature materials. I just want to try it much more now in the next couple of weeks. I have a big project coming up where I'm going to use all of these faster printers for this project because I want to pump out a few more parts in shorter time. This is the new version, the version 2 of the X plus 3. It seems that this printer is much more reliable. It seems that it has been much improved. Many more metal parts in this printer. Only time can tell how good this printer is actually. Maybe a few words on a filament that I have been using for this project. I was starting with Dust Filament, Refill Filament. It's a German brand. In the beginning, I was quite happy with this filament. It worked. Now, it seems that the quality of this filament has gotten worse. So I got so many problems with nozzle clogging on my printers with this filament that I decided at some point I need to try out different filaments. And I switched over to ESUN, EPLA. It's quite cheap, but it's super good in terms of the quality and how had zero problems with nozzle clogging with this filament. And I also tried out the Polymaker Polylite and Polyterra. Both the Polymaker and the Esun filament seem to be quite good for these kind of projects, super reliable and less likely to get clogging. So I can highly recommend using these kind of filaments. Finally, let me share with you what happened to the revenue of the project. Where did I invest it? And in the beginning, I didn't have so many printers in a print farm. I bought a few more printers, so the Sobel printers and also the Bambolet P1P was added to the print farm and that was one of the investments that I did with the money that I made on a project and I also invested partially into the business into the studio with some confidence I can say that most of the money that I made in this project have been reinvested into the company just to build it out even more and I also had a few learnings I also paid some money just for my learnings and my mistakes so didn't make as much money in the end as I expected so concluding I can say this was a successful project I would do a few more things differently. If you have any questions about this project or 3D printing as a business in general, don't hesitate to ask them here down in this comment section of this video. I'm gonna try to answer all the questions. We're gonna do a Q&A if you want. If there's enough questions, I'm gonna do a Q&A video as a next step to answer all of your questions. And I wanna thank you in advance for all of your questions because I like the community that they have here on YouTube. With that, I wanna thank you again for watching this video if you made it to this point in the video. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet, and I'm gonna see you next time back on this channel for a new video. Bye.